Hello friends, this is Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead coming to you from beautiful Northwest Ohio where this week on the homestead my husband Adam and my two oldest boys were able to plant some fruit trees and we were able to plant two more apple trees. We did two persimmon trees that are hardy enough for our zone as well as two peach trees. So we're really excited. Every year we try to add a few more trees to our growing orchard and the hopes that one day we will be growing all of our bulk fruit needs for the entire year and have extras to give to others in our area. So we were happy to accomplish that this week. But that isn't what I want to focus on in this video. In this video, we're going to talk a lot about eggs because if you have chickens or ducks or any other poultry that lays eggs, you know that this time of year in spring, it is egg season. We are up to our ears in eggs here. On our homestead, we have approximately 35 chicken hens that lay eggs as well as approximately a dozen duck hens. So on any given day, we can be getting about an average of three dozen eggs, which sounds like a ton, but it really isn't when you have a family of 10. We can easily eat two dozen eggs for one breakfast, and then that will leave us an additional dozen to use for any of our baking needs for the day, or any other cooking projects that we would like to do. And that is what I'm gonna share with you in this video, are some of the creative ways that we were using our extra eggs this week in the kitchen. Now, of course, when we have extra eggs, there are ways that we preserve those eggs, and I've shared that with you in many videos before. I will link a video in the description that talks all about water glassing eggs, which is how we preserve our clean eggs for fresh eating throughout the winter when our hens and ducks take a break from laying eggs. We also freeze dry eggs. We scramble them up, freeze dry them into a powder, and they can be reconstituted to use for breakfast as well. So today we're not gonna talk so much about preserving extra eggs. We're gonna talk about some of the fun ways that I use our extra eggs to make treats that we can't make during other times of the year when we don't have as much. So for our first recipe, I need to run out to the garden to one of the first things that pop up this time of year and that is garlic chives. I have them in this bed. I also have some lettuce and scallions and I believe I planted dill and cilantro in this bed. But down here on this end is my perennial garlic chive plant which I let go to seed last year so you can see lots of little baby plants that are popping up. And these have a delicious garlicky onion flavor. I love this time of year because um, it's one of the few things that are growing in the garden that I'm able to use. And so now I'm back inside and we are going to turn these into some mini quiches. But before I do that, I need to make the pie crust for my quiche. So I am grinding down some wheat berries. We're gonna sift that into a pastry flour and remove the bran because I just prefer my pie crust with sifted flour. From there, we're gonna get started making our pie crust. I started with five cups of that sifted flour in my food processor, and to that I added one and a half cups of fat. I'm using palm fruit shortening. You want something solid at room temperature. And then to that, I added a half a cup of cold water and just a little bit of salt. I put that in my food processor and let it do the work of cutting the fat into the flour for me. And when it was done, I was able to roll out that dough so that we can get started making our little mini pie crusts. Now I'm gonna make my mini quiches in muffin tins. And so what I find is that a wide mouth canning ring is the perfect size circle to press those little pie crusts, those little round pie crusts into my muffin tin. And that is what we're going to do. With this amount of pie dough that I made, I can make two dozen of these little mini pies and it will work out perfectly. Now we are primarily making these to put in the freezer for my oldest son who um, works rather early some mornings and I'd like for him to be able to pull some of these out of the freezer or I will actually probably pull them out for him in the morning and get them in the oven and he has a really quick breakfast ready to go 
um, on days when I don't necessarily want to make him a hot breakfast from scratch that early in the morning. And so these quiches freeze really well and are really convenient. Now we need to work on our filling for the quiche. So of course I have those garlic chives that we just harvested. They're all washed and we're going to chop them up. I'm putting them in here with some eggs. I like to use chicken eggs instead of duck eggs for most of my breakfasts. To that, I'm adding some freeze-dried spinach powder, a little bit of almond milk, and some salt and pepper. But you can put anything in this that you like to put in a quiche, any kind of vegetable, adding some bacon or sausage or any other spices that you like would work really well. This is just a basic quiche, nothing fancy. And we're just going to take that jar and pour it into our little muffin cups and get ready to bake it. Now remember when you fill these that it is going to puff up a little bit. That egg is going to expand so don't overfill them. Um, and when we bake these we're going to get them in the oven on 350 degrees and they only take about 20 minutes. Now I only bake them for the 20 minutes because they are going to be frozen and then reheated. So I find that they will brown in the oven when I pull them out and thaw them and they're heating in the oven that last time. So all I need to do now is let them cool and then we can get them bagged up and put them in the freezer. So what I will do is on the evening before one of Gabriel's work mornings, I will just pull three of these or so out of the freezer and put them in the fridge to thaw overnight. And then first thing when I wake up, I can just pull them out, put them in the oven on about 350 degrees, and that will help them finish thawing and then we'll brown them up so they will be warm and nice and perfect for him to have. I had a little buddy here that wanted to try one. They were kind of hot. He needs to wait for it to cool a little bit more. But then a little bit later, I was able to package these up. And all I'm doing is just kind of putting them in a freezer bag like this. And I will lay them flat in the freezer. And at that point, I can just pull out as many from the bag as I need at a time to thaw. All right, on to the next project. So now we're gonna use duck eggs. So like I said, I really like to use chicken eggs for things like scrambled eggs in our typical breakfast that we eat. Duck eggs are something I much prefer to use for baking. They have really nice, big, thick yolks and really thick whites. They do have a slightly different taste, so they're not something that I necessarily love to eat raw for breakfast, but they're great for baking. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some salt here. This is bulk pink Himalayan salt that I get from Azure Standard. And I'm just putting it in the bottom of this um, plastic container here. We just want to have a layer that's about a half an inch or so thick on the bottom. Now we're going to get busy cracking our duck eggs. What I'm doing right now is separating the yolks from the whites. And I'm pouring the whites into my little super cube tray here. I find that one of these whites from an egg is about two tablespoons worth. And so it fills my two tablespoon thick super cube tray. So those are going to be frozen to use in the future for any recipe that might call for a couple egg whites. And now these yolks, what I'm doing is putting them in the salt and we are going to cure them. Salt cured egg yolks have somewhat of a cheesy flavor and as a family that can't eat cheese on a lot of our foods that we would normally like to have cheese like pizza, if you take these dried egg yolks and you grate them over the pizza or something, it gives it the look of a cheese as well as the flavor of kind of that rich Parmesan cheese um, flavoring. So I've done this for you guys in a video, but it's been a couple of years and I thought I would just give you a refresher on how you do this in case you missed it the last time. And so this is something that I do maybe every three or four months. I just cure some of these yolks and then we have them to use for eating. So this is a process that will take probably about three weeks to complete. And so I will update you on the other steps of the process in the coming weeks videos. So now that I have my super cubes tray all full, I put it in the freezer 
and then the next day I was able to pull that out and just simply pop out those egg whites put them in another container to store long term and then like I said whenever I need some egg whites I can just pull those out and thaw them now we're gonna get back to the rest of these egg yolks I am just needing a couple more to fill this container completely and now that the bottom of this salt is covered with enough egg yolks what we need to do now is cover the top so once again I'm trying to cover it with approximately a half an inch or so of salt total on the top just shaking it and then that salt is going to draw all of the moisture out of the yolks and preserve them perfectly so we will just set that aside and let that cure and we will come back to that in about two weeks and I'll show you the rest of that process now to use up more of these duck eggs we are going to make two different recipes I already had two egg whites in the bottom of this jar and I'm going to crack six more in there and I'll save the six yolks to make some dairy-free chocolate pudding and then we're going to save those egg whites to make some meringues so here are those yolks we're going to set aside here are the whites we're going to let those come to room temperature now we're going to make our chocolate pudding I have some cacao powder arrowroot powder we have some chocolate chips maple syrup this is a little bit of almond milk and then we have our egg yolks and that is all I need to make this pudding. To make a dairy free pudding you can use any kind of milk alternative you would like. A lot of people like to use coconut milk but I am going to use almond milk on this day. We're starting with three and a half cups of almond milk in our pan here and we are going to sweeten it with maple syrup three-fourths a cup of maple syrup there's going to be no refined white sugar in this this is a little bit of a healthier pudding with a low sweetener and then to that we're going to add three tablespoons of arrowroot powder this is what is going to help thicken up the pudding along with the egg yolks and then we're going to add one cup of our cacao powder here and this is what's going to help give it our chocolate flavoring but in a second here, I need to pull this other pan off of the stove. I'll show you what this is here in a little bit, but it was about to boil over and I was thankful that I caught it before it did. We just need our final third of a cup of cacao powder there to total one full cup. From there, we're gonna begin blending all of those ingredients together and we need to just warm them up on the stove and get it nice and hot. Now we can begin slowly adding our egg yolks and I'm blending them as I add them so that they will cook up slowly and we won't have an actual cooked egg yolk in the middle of our pudding. We want them to be nice and creamy and blended in. I have now switched to my manual whisk here and we're just gonna keep whisking, whisking, whisking until we get it nice and thick into our pudding-like texture. Now you could also make this recipe without the chocolate. You could make a vanilla pudding just by adding a little bit scraping inside of a vanilla bean and leaving out the cacao powder, maybe adding a little extra sweetener. We are going to put a little bit of vanilla extract into our chocolate pudding. And then I'm also going to add some chocolate chips for just a little bit of an extra chocolate flavor. These are bulk chocolate chips that I got from Azure Standard that are sweetened with coconut sugar. So they um, are also a healthy sweetener that is making this refined sugar free. Once I have it as thick as I would like it, I'm going to go ahead and pour it into my bowls here. This will continue to thicken as it cools in the refrigerator and this is the final texture of that pudding. So baking things that are dairy free can be tricky but with the right ingredients you can get a consistency that is just like the dairy based alternative and it's that arrowroot powder that really does help thicken it up a little bit and so the children were all very excited. We I haven't made a chocolate pudding in probably I don't know a year and a half two years maybe so the children were very excited to have this some of the little ones don't even remember having it before so this is one way that we're using up our extra egg yolks this time of year now let's get back to those egg whites I set them aside and let them come to room temperature because you do need to have room temperature egg whites in order to make the meringues that I'm going to show you here we started with eight egg yolks and to that we're going to add one teaspoon of cream of tartar and we're also going to add one fourth a teaspoon of salt. 
I'm using my Bosch mixer to whip these up. I'm just going to use the whisk attachment. We're going to get the mixer turned on, and while that is starting to whip up, we are going to measure out our sugar. And I have a little helper here who is enjoying keeping me company while I do this. So my bulk sugar from Azure Standard, it's a cane sugar that is very coarse, and it would not make a meringue texture. Um, it would not allow the whites to whip up. So I am choosing to use powdered sugar. Instead, we are going to measure out two cups of it. Now, if I didn't have powdered sugar, I would just run my coarse cane sugar through my food processor and powder it down myself. And so we're just going to dump that into the mixer with the egg white mixture and let that whip up nice and thick. We want to get stiff peaks. But in the meantime, I need to get out my pastry bag here because we are going to pipe these meringues onto our cookie sheet. So I am grateful I have a baker in the house who loves to make cakes and he allows me to borrow all of his cake decorating supplies whenever I need to do something like this because I am not the type of person that does a lot of um, baking like this, piping and decorating. And so David has all of the tools that I need to get jobs like this done. So we just have this simple piping bag here. We picked out a tip that had a star shape on the top of it that will make some pretty meringue cookies for us. So this is what it looks like in the mixture in the mixer as it is whipping up. We want to get those stiff peaks that stand up when it's upside down and now we are ready to make our meringues. I've put some parchment paper on my cookie sheet and here comes the messy job of filling up that piping bag with the meringue mixture. It's pretty um, simple and straightforward from there. So now you could flavor your meringues however you would like. Sometimes we'll add a little bit of peppermint extract to um, the end as it's whipping up. We sometimes add vanilla extract, which is what I did on this day. You can add food coloring to make them fun colors. You could add a little cacao powder to make them chocolate. Lots of fun options for making a meringue like this. And then you can do whatever fun shapes you want. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm letting the kids kind of help me, and we're just making little, I don't know what you would call them, like Hershey Kiss type <laughs> shapes out of the meringue. And the boys were really enjoying get trying their hand at making them. It's a little trickier than it looks, getting used to using the piping bag and knowing exactly how much pressure to put on it and where to put the pressure. Now I know these are called meringue cookies, but I do not view these as a cookie. To me, they seem more like a candy. And my children don't necessarily eat a lot of store-bought candy. That isn't something that we keep a lot of in the house or that they get on a regular basis. So making something like this, like a meringue, is a really nice treat for them. This is essentially like candy because it's just sugar, <laughs> but it is healthier than most store-bought candies because you don't have all the corn syrup and the artificial um, coloring and things like that. And you do have the egg whites that give it some protein. So a little healthier alternative than a store-bought candy. All we did was put these in the oven on 225 degrees and that dried them out. They were in there for about an hour and you just want to make sure they are thoroughly dried. And then as these sit in storage, if they do start to get a little sticky, again, you can always pop them back into the oven on 225 degrees and just dry them again, and that will work just fine. So like I said, just a fun kind of candy treat. I was letting the, guy, the children try a couple of these at this point, and then we were going to save them for our movie night, and the children could have the rest of these meringues with some popcorn when we watched a movie later on this week. So we went through a lot of eggs this week, which means we have produced quite a lot of eggshells and we do feed a lot of the eggshells back to our chickens and ducks for calcium. That's really good for them, but they can only eat so many of those. And so we have some other uses for the extra eggshells that I would like to share for you. The first thing I'm gonna do is crush some of these duck eggs that I used today to preserve all the salt cured egg yolks and to make all of the baked goods that we made today. And so I'm just getting these crushed down a little bit. And then what we're going to do is put these in a pan and add a little bit of water 
We're just going to boil these on the stove for, I don't know, approximately 30 minutes. And then once they've boiled for that 30 minutes, I take them off and grab my little immersion blender and blend them down even more. Now, what we are going to do is make a calcium tea out of these eggshells to help feed our garden plants. And so I am putting all of this water in those eggshells in a gallon jar and filling it the rest of the way with water. We're just gonna get a lid on this and we're gonna set this aside for a couple days and let that brew into a calcium tea. Let all of those minerals in the eggshells leach out of the shells into the water. And then after a couple of days, I can strain all of those eggshells out and I have this mineral rich water that's left behind that I can now use to water my seedlings that are inside of my house here, the seedlings that I'm waiting patiently to transplant into the garden once the threat of frost is over. So I have broccoli plants and peppers and tomatoes growing in here right now, and all of those are plants that benefit a lot from a little extra calcium. You wanna make sure you're giving your peppers and tomatoes enough calcium throughout the growing season so that you don't get things like blossom end rot, and then broccoli is just a plant and other brassicas as well that contain a lot of calcium. And so they need a lot of calcium in the soil so that the plant can, can have all of those nutrients available and so that you can consume it. So watering with this, I'm trying to do this once every week or every other week. And it's just making my plants look extra healthy and perky. And now the final thing that I'm doing with extra eggs this week is getting my incubator going. I have been collecting all of the clean eggs, the cleaner eggs that have come out of the coop during a very rainy week. And there are very few eggs that actually make it out of the coops that are, are not covered in mud and muck. But I've saved the ones that were and just picked through and wanted a selection of various colors from all of our different breeds. And I'm filling my incubator with all of these so that we can start this year's first batch of new chicks for our laying flock. I've had this little incubator. I think this is the fifth year that I'll be using it, and I love it. It just gives me 22 chicks, which is a really manageable amount for me. And what we'll do is any hens that we hatch out of this will be added to our laying flock. And any of the extra roosters we will process for meat birds once they are a good size. So this little incubator is great. It works wonderfully. I'm just going to get it plugged in. It has an automatic egg turner that you have to plug in. And then I'll plug it into the wall. And it will take 21 days for us to hatch chicks, which I will take you along for that process once it happens. So I can candle my eggs here to check what's going on inside here there's a light i can stick right there and then i can adjust the temperature and humidity we're just trying to get those adjusted we try to keep this between 99 and 100 degrees and then the humidity is usually around 60 percent it's just adjusting because i just now plugged it in so that'll be fun to take you along on that journey as those hatch other than that, what we've been up to this week, just plugging away at school. We're back from our spring break. We have 11 more weeks to go, and we are very diligently trying to finish the year strong with our schoolwork before gardening season really takes over. I hope all of you had a wonderful week. We will be back next week with yet another video, and until then, friends, bye. Have a great week.